we're all trying to get our preschoolers ready for kindergarten, but what does that actually mean? I mean, what skills are needed to truly find success in a kindergarten classroom? Well, join me today because I have insider information. We have a kindergarten teacher on the line to share us the real skills that our preschoolers need to know to be ready for kindergarten. Welcome back to the Preschool All-Stars Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Anderson. And with me today is my good friend, Greg Smedley-Warren. Greg has taught elementary school for the past 15 years, with the greater majority of those 12 years being in kindergarten. So he has all the knowledge to be able to help us know this. He's built a giant social media presence as well as his online following with his kindergarten curriculum, his Elevate conferences, and his website, The Kindergarten Smorgasbord. Greg, welcome to our podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Me too. I found you through your Elevate conference, which was absolutely phenomenal. All of our preschool all-stars loved going through it, hearing from a kindergarten teacher what is needed. But before we dive into that, could you share your story with us? How did you get involved in this and it finally lead to this amazing uh, thing that you're helping everyone else online? So I started, so I, this will be year... 15 or 16. I've lost track at this point. Um, but I started teaching my first year in fifth grade. Loved fifth grade. But I had a little girl in my class who could only read at a second grade level. And it, it, it frustrated me. It broke my heart. And it, it made me angry. And I, I didn't want that to happen to another student. So I moved to second grade. Um, and I was in second grade for two years. And I absolutely loved it. And I was like, I'll, you know, I'm going to stay here. This is where I want to be. This is great. After two years. Um, had a principal who forced me um, to kindergarten very much against my will. Um, kindergarten and fourth grade were like my no goes. Like those were the two, like, nope, not <laughs> happening. So a principal moved me to kindergarten um, and I was 31 years old and I, I called my mommy and cried um, <laughs> because I did not want to do it. But that very first day of kindergarten, I fell in love and I knew immediately that kindergarten is, is where I belong. And so after my first year in kindergarten, my teammates started saying, you know, oh, you, you, should, you should start a blog. You do all these really cool things. You, you're very out of the box. You're very innovative. You should really start a blog. And I was like, well, first of all, I don't even know how that, how, like, I didn't know any of that. And I'm like, who would read it besides my mom? Like, so I was like, whatever. And so I started talking about it and talking about it. And finally, one day, my husband, Jason was like, would you just shut up and do it already? <laughs> and so I literally sat down one day um, and wrote my first blog post. And the idea, my my whole idea was, I'm going to just share what I do in my classroom. And if one person reads that, if one teacher sees that and they get inspired, then great. Um, and so that's how it started. It literally just started with the encouragement of my my teammates and Jason. And I was, you know, very organic and it's all from my classroom and it just took off. Not at all what I expected. None of this has been planned. This was not like some big long-term plan that we came up with. None of this was expected, but that that's how it happened. Well, thank heavens you did it though, because how many, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people follow you for your amazing advice and curriculum. And I'll be honest, your quick wittedness and your social comedy. I love it. <laughs> your Facebook posts that say, you know, we went through, we had several months of virtual, you know, kindergarten with everyone keeping their clothes on. But today was the day where today, someone came in underwear. <laughs> 11 weeks. We made it 11 weeks until someone showed up in their underwear. <laughs> and how was your day? I love right. how you always end that. <laughs> well, I think that's so, and yeah, I get asked about that a lot. And I, the reason I ask that, so you know, we make our, our, I try to share something that happens in my classroom every day. Most of the time they're funny. And then I always say, you know, and how was your day? The reasoning behind that question is because I don't think people in general listen to teachers. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone's asking them, how was your day? And so that's my small way of saying to teachers is like, hey, I see you, I hear you. And so it's my way of giving them the opportunity to talk about what's going on with them. And a completely safe community to be able to share. Well, let me just tell you, because it, yeah, there was something that happened today. So I love that you've built that amazing community. Now, and how it makes long us all feel better because we all go through the same things. Like yes. 
you read those, like if you start reading those comments from teachers, you're like, yeah, I, yeah, I've been there. Oh yeah, that, oh yeah. And then sometimes you're like, oh, I thought my day was rough, but that one beats me. So it, it, it makes you feel better. I love that so much. Yes, like us teachers, we have the stories for days, but we just need to relate to each other. That's so perfect. Right. So how long have you been um, creating your curriculum and actually selling it to other teachers? I don't know exactly, but close to 10 years. Um, so I started the blog um, and that was kind of it. And then I heard about this website called Teachers Pay Teachers. And I was like, oh, that would be great if I could make a couple of things and make just enough money to cover my classroom expenses. Because, you know, we all spend money out of our own pockets, right? Yep. And so I was like, if I could just cover that, that would be great. And so that's what, that's how that started. Um, and so that's, that's where that came from. So about 10 years. That's awesome. And then did that merge into now your conferences as well? Did that kind of, your conferences came out of probably this need of people needing to be around and, and connect with each other, right? Absolutely. So, you know, I start, I'd been presenting for a lot of different um, associations and districts. And so finally we were just like, why don't we do our own so that we can, that it can be kindergarten. Like, because the, you know, it, it's hard to find, and this is probably true for preschool too. It can sometimes be hard to find PD and conferences that are geared for early childhood, specifically kindergarten, preschool, pre-K. And so we knew there was a need. And so we, we wanted to do a conference that, that was all real life stuff. And so that, that's the thing about Kindergarten Smorgasbord and Elevate is that it all comes out of my classroom. I'm a real life, full-time kindergarten teacher. And, you know, this year, virtual teacher, in-person teacher, and I'm a dad. And so trying to, and a husband and trying to balance <laughs> it all, like it's real. And so yeah. I think that's one of the biggest draws for people mm -hmm. is that I'm not somebody who's left the classroom and I'm like, oh, you should do this, maybe do this or try this. No, I'm really, I'm doing it. And I'm sharing what works and what doesn't work and all the things that go into that. Absolutely. So you mentioned you're a real kindergarten teacher. Let's dive into that because us preschool teachers and those wanting to get their kiddos ready for kindergarten, we all hear that phrase. We need them to be ready for kindergarten. But let's let's talk to someone who actually knows what skills that you need for that classroom. So let's just start from the beginning. What are the some of the biggest skills that you would hope that we could help with as mothers or as parents or as educators to prepare them for kindergarten? So, and these are going to sound like, like no brainers. Like these are going to sound very simple, very obvious, but they make such an impact. And I actually just had this conversation with my cousin last night, who's trying to prepare her daughter for kindergarten. Yeah. The first thing is independence. And again, you're like, oh, well, yeah, of course, obviously. But like, think about like all <laughs> the things that they can do on their own, tying their shoes, or at least putting their shoes on, taking their shoes off putting on a jacket or a coat or a hat and gloves, taking their pants on and off to go to the bathroom. You know, all of those things that anything that, that they can do independently, practice that, teach them that. <laughs> so when they walk into a kindergarten classroom, I don't have to take off 27 jackets, that they can do it on their own. Um, and I, I think as a dad and a teacher, like those are the things that I'm constantly looking at. Like, what can I teach Adeline Rose to do on her own today? Like, and she's, she's 20 months. And so, you know, but it's, it's build that independence so that they can do things on their own. Because then in the classroom, you're spending less time with coats and, uh, you know, all lunch boxes and everything. And you're spending more time on teaching, socializing, building all the other right, skills. Right. And it just, it makes the day go smoother and it makes yeah. them feel successful because they can do stuff by themselves. Absolutely. I would say one of the most frustrating things in our preschool classroom was always putting on the jacket until we found the best trick ever. You stick that jacket on the floor and it's so visual though, you know, but you lay it out on the floor with all laid out and the zipper on the top and kind of like open a bit. And you put the child though, not on the side where the belly would be, but you put the child on the other side, standing up by the hood. And then you just ask the child to stick the arms in the jacket sleeves and flip it over their back. Oh. And now they're, have you, have you seen that before? No. Oh, Greg, <laughs> it'll change your life. I'm going to drop you a link to that video. Yes. <laughs> it, it saved us as preschoolers. Perhaps they've got it figured out in kindergarten, but in preschool, oh boy. <laughs> well, even in kindergarten, every year I, I like, I'm literally picturing the different kids each year who, 
yes. in April, they're still like, they come to me and they're like, I'm ready. And their jackets <laughs> on backwards and they're all, I'm like, no, no. And like, we've worked on it all year. So yes, no. I would love to see that video. <laughs> okay. We will send it for sure. Okay. So we talked about independence, which don't write it off. Don't just say, okay, well, yeah, we kind of do. No, no, no. Go back to the basics. What are all the things that your child still needs your help as a parent to do or as a teacher um, through preschool? And then try to offload as many of those that they right. can do themselves. Okay, next. What else? The next thing, and again, these all are going to seem so simple and obvious, but they make such a big impact, is teach your kids to talk to adults, to mm-hmm. respond to adults. And so, and it doesn't, I'm not talking like carry on a conversation, but if someone says, hello, you say, hi. If Mr. Greg says, how are you? <laughs> no, you say good. Just getting them used to being able to answer a question um, and to, to respond. And I know that's hard because it's it's language and, you know, strangers and all of that. It can be a lot. But the more that we get them to talk to adults, the easier it is when they move into kindergarten because they're used to having those conversations. And so, you know, just talk to them and ask them questions and, and try it you know, start with yes and no questions because those are going to be easy for them to answer, but start moving into some more open-ended questions so that they can start to talk and tell you more stuff. That's perfect. Okay. Helping them to speak with adults, start with those yes or no, and then get up to the the full-on conversations. Um, Any other tips that we can have for helping our preschoolers or young children get ready for kindergarten? Um, You know, another one, and this is something that, that we try to be very, very explicit with Adeline is to just talk to them about everything. <laughs> and like, and we have done this since she was a baby because this is something that I've been very passionate about um, is just talking to kids about anything and everything. Look, I'm, I'm getting out a bowl because I'm going to eat some cereal. Now I'm going to open the pantry and I'm going to get out the box of cereal. Look at Mr. I'm, oh, daddy's opening the box of cereal. Like, and you sound like a crazy person. <laughs> But what is happening is they, they're processing all of that and they're building those, that language and that vocabulary, which sets them up for success. And so, you know, Adeline just talks and talks and talks. And we, we have friends who have babies the same age and they're like, how did you get her to say all those words? And I'm like, because we literally have talked to her about everything from the day she was born. And so it has made a huge impact. And so just talk to them, explain to them to to your kids, what you're doing, why you're doing it, what it is, how it works, and use the vocabulary words. Don't be afraid to use those words because, yeah, they don't necessarily know what they mean and they may not be able to say those, but they're it's there. And so when those things come up in a classroom, they already have a little bit of that background knowledge. And I think the same principle applies when we're, you know, the whole goal is to read to our child every night, right? Because we're building the vocab. But I love how you're talking about through your daily interactions, you know, so that they're seeing all the the things in their home. Everything has a name, right? We are doing actions with things. They're learning how words string together. So I absolutely love that tip. Now, let me ask you one thing. When I first started preschool, I came to my daughter's kindergarten teacher and I said, if I can help these kids get ready for kindergarten, what do I need to do, right? Help me be a better preschool teacher. And she said, Truly, the only thing I would like you to help them do, <laughs> she's like, just one thing. One thing. <laughs> one thing. I was like, okay, I can do that. And I'm thinking letters, <laughs> not letters. It wasn't letters. It was to help the kiddos learn how to listen. She said, if you can teach your children to listen when I speak, right? When a teacher speaks, I can teach them anything. Right. <laughs> I was like, that's just a good, like, simple thing, right? Right. Yeah. And right. And, I, you know, I think to my classroom, like we do, we start every day with a morning meeting. And one of the things that we're working on in that morning meeting is listening. And Mm -hmm. so that's absolutely something. And with my kids, what I'm doing is, you know, I, we teach them to look at the person who's talking. And so they, we, you know, that might mean you have to turn your head. That might mean you have to turn your whole body, but you look at the person who's talking to you, you know, and that helps with that attention. And so they're focused on the speaker. We talk about how we use our ears to listen. And we use our mouth to talk. And so if someone else is using their mouth, we're using our ears. And so absolutely getting them to listen, um, which is way easier said than done. Yes, especially with virtual kindergarten and such. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's it, Yes. <laughs> that mute button, though, huh? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I wish there was an attention button. Like, I wish, like, there was something I could do to get them all to stop 
focusing on whatever's going on in their house. Right. (laughs) I love that. Okay. So thank you for sharing all of your tips. I know everybody needs to follow you and be able to get more of Greg. Where can they go? Where can they get your kindergarten curriculum? You sign up for your conferences, find you on social. Where can they go? So the easiest way to find us is at our website. It's the kindergartensmorgasbord.com. And so on there we have, I think we're like close to 1500 blog posts. And then you, that links to all of our social media. And so you can also just search Kindergarten Smorgasbord and you'll find us on all of our social media. Um, we also have our online store, which is the um, tksstore.com. And so that's where you can get all of our, our curriculum and our resources and all of our, our creations. Awesome. So everybody needs to go do this right now. Go to the thekindergartensmorgasbord.com and go just follow this amazing man. He, you, Everything he says. You will learn so much. (laughs) Thank you. I I appreciate that. (laughs) Absolutely. And again, Greg, thank you so much for being on our podcast. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. If you love today's episode, then you are going to love this. I want to give you a free gift in your hands. This is a copy of my book, Start Your Preschool, and I want to get it to you for free. Yes, I said for free. It is a 300-page book. It'll help you learn the step-by-step process to actually starting your local or your online preschool. Every single step that I walked myself through, as well as the thousands of women who've created their own successful preschools have gone through the exact steps listed in this book. Not to mention, I also share 20 amazing women's stories. So as you can see how not only did it work for me, but it works for amazing women just like you as well. I want to get you this free copy. Just go to freepreschoolbook.com or click the link in the description and we'll get it to you today. Again, just go to freepreschoolbook.com and we'll get it right to you. 